Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to greet you and a good evening. Uh, we are presenting a briefing paper on logistics and supply chain management. What you see here uh, are my team members that have contributed uh, so much to this briefing paper. This is the question that requires our attention. Uh, what it requires us to illustrate how the Russian Ukraine conflict has and continues to affect an organization of our choice. In this briefing paper, we would like to choose a nation, and that is Uganda. Then, part B requires us to define and justify any five supply chain management strategies to overcome the challenges. The Russian Ukraine crisis has had a big toll on life, on property, and has not exempted the supply chain activities. In this briefing paper, we are going to focus on how the Russian Ukraine crisis has affected Uganda and, more specifically, the pharmaceutical sector. Uh, the, uh, 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 the, uh, the pharma sector in Uganda has been affected due to uh, closed airspace, uh, due to closed uh, sea ports, and a lot of other uh, uh, other inputs and outputs for uh, supply chain management. So, I would like at this point uh, to give a summary of some of the challenges that Uganda has faced uh, due to the uh, Russian Ukraine crisis. Uh, there has been several impacts, uh, impact on raw materials, manufacturing, and costs around the supply chain, impact on quality, technology and innovation, investment, clinical trials, medicine logistics, and cyber security. At this point, I'd like to invite uh, one of my team members to come and take us through the impacts that Russian crisis has had on the supply chain in Uganda. Yes, thank you so much, Assis. Henry Chuka is my name, and I'm here to discuss the impact of Russia's invasion on Ukraine on the raw materials and factoring and the cost along the medical supply chain in Uganda. I mean, the one thing we have to know about Uganda is that Uganda is a landlocked country. We import most of our materials and products, finished products, from countries like India and others that rely mainly on the countries like Ukraine and Russia. We know Russia, we know Ukraine is a big producer of which, which also contributes the raw materials to be much common factor. So what happens, as these countries are experiencing their crises, India is affected in terms of the delivery of raw materials from Ukraine to India, through the delays and extended lead times. So this impacts the prices of the raw materials and the finished products that will come down to Uganda. That will come down to Uganda. So what happens even the medical supply chain in Uganda we say Greece experienced those challenges. Another thing are the sanctions imposed on Russia. Where and again, because we all know Russia contributes about 12%, the oldest fuel and 12% of the oldest, or 70% of the oldest gas, sorry. So what happens is that the movement of these raw materials again from either India to Uganda will also experience some serious delays. And the that also impacts on the, the, the issue of quality and the prices of the finished products. Thank you so much for that point. Maybe the other issue to address is about the impact on quality. As these products are, are supposed to be moving from one country to another, even the raw materials, we are likely to experience serious issues because of the delayed movement of these raw materials. Remember, the longer you store them, the more the expiry time or the issue of Appreciation comes about. So it, happen, it happens that the late movement of these products because of the prices, increased the prices or the hiked prices of the raw materials and the fuel prices, it affects on the quality because they always play on the cost of movement or import because of that. Then the other issue is about mm, opting for different manufacturers, different suppliers of raw materials. As you move to opt for different suppliers of raw materials, we are more likely to face what will come into contact with the suppliers supplying raw materials of low quality. This again also affects the quality of the finished product. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, 
I I hand over this point to Ms. Mm -hmm. Take us step up through. In addition, Russia was even able to manufacture and produce its own COVID-19 vaccine. Yeah. Thank you. My colleague, Thank you so much, Laika, and everyone else for putting on the strategy, sorry, the impact of the Ukraine, the Russia-Ukraine crisis on our dear Uganda. I want to move straight and also take you on how it has impacted uh, the, lo the, the logistics in the pharmaceutical industry in Uganda. We all know we need uh, Russia and Ukraine are countries which produce uh, a lot of fuel, uh, fuel gas, which, which propel the, the motor vehicles, whichever machinery is used to bring the products down here. So when they are not working, that means that prices are all skyrocketing. We are facing that as we buy fuel on our day to day, which is the same thing affecting the pharmaceutical world in Uganda here. So you find that products are reaching late, the costs are skyrocketed. This is increasing the prices for the layman person. And also, this has disrupted the logistics, sorry, this has disrupted the logistics in the health and pharmaceutical sectors. Besides only bringing down the drugs down here, you find that there are some people who are dependent on this, on donations and the likes. So when these people are at work, we are, we are failing to get drugs to help the people in, there are people struggling, the HIV, the maternal, the maternal health and whichever. Then we also want to look at technology and innovation. We all know that Ukraine first and pause, Russia. First pause. We all know that these two countries at war are blessed with uh, a lot with with gurus in the engineering and IT world. So when these guys are at war, they are not doing their best. They are not delivering as as always. So. There is, there is a delay in technology development and new, 
innovations now, like a third world country like us who depend on the depend on technology, important technology, and some innovations, we are really, really being affected. Then I'll move straight to the cyber attacks. Like, I, I think we all know about these viruses, the malwares and disruptive ransomwares. Uh, I'll request Michael to, yeah, to say something on this, on the cyber attacks. Yeah, over to you, Michael. My name is Mike Yes, my coach of cyber attacks. We all know that Russia has, has the best hackers in the world. Maybe China is getting bit at its game a bit. But ever since the war, Russia has been really good at carrying out attacks on other countries that really produce the needed raw materials and uh, the facilities that are used in the production of pharmaceutical products. So, I think we should go to the strategy due to the time. I call my, my colleague, and Okay, thank you, my So, down here, we are laying up the strategy. Yes. But we think the benchmark on or best on on building the resilient supply chain of the commodities in Uganda. And the market there is cost, cost management. Yes. We have experienced previously the pandemic, which has affected the supply chain much more. And on top, as we are here, we are very free from the pandemic issues. Then there comes another issue of the Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This again has impacted on the prices of the APIs and the, the raw materials. The APIs are active and powered to mm -hmm. That is, this is just a, a, an application meaning actually compared to ingredients. Then the raw materials. So these prices are seriously worsened mean, by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So the issue, the steps, all the strategies you can take as a country is one of them is having a fight supply platform. For example, you have to opt for organizations like NMS and GMS to do the procurement on behalf of the country. And another thing, this company, Magical companies, or the manufacturing companies, can get some of these impacts of the APIs prices, the raw materials and the APIs prices. That is, through having a better capability of demand for plastic and the also reliable market indices, which will help them, which will help them reprogram the prices and the cost of natural strategies. So another issue is about the dependence, regional dependence and potential supply chain shifts. Yes, Uganda is a landlocked country, and you know most of these things again. I say we import most of these pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical supplies, raw materials. So what happens is we shall import them, most of them from India, of which India imports them from one of these countries, either Russia or Ukraine, but mainly Ukraine, because of its much more investment in agriculture, which are used, which are mainly the sources of raw materials. So what happens as we know the Russia, the Russia's invasion of Ukraine affects the movement of these products, all the materials from there, which includes the supply chain of India on, on a halt by extending the lead times. So what, what we do, all the companies do is shift from importing them from India, the nearby neighbors such as Kenya, or coming down to Uganda mainly, and the other countries in Europe with this type of supply chain. Thank you so much. Yeah, you should be in the buffer stock, and uh, I am over to Zraika to take that too. Um, for the point of saying buffer stock, for buffer stock, we all know it's like keeping excess stock in our warehouse response stores that can help us guard maybe against any unplanned, unplanned situations like delays fluctuating prices and scarcity. Like this can work mostly for Uganda because it depends mostly on imports from other country, countries. Mm -hmm. So this can lead to, can become buffer stock can also be a point as a strategy under this Indeed. Russian invasion crisis. Thank you.
point of uh, block te chain technology. Uh, this deals with uh, cyber attacks and as a strategy, blockchain technology basically has the best and one of the best as encryptions from software and to protection to cyber attacks. It also supports systems of payment. For example, cryptocurrency, even most banks use it in the transfer of money in EFT systems. So the blockchain system has helped safeguard the movement of money and payments. So this has enabled uh, the this has enabled the logistics and supply chain to continue despite the disruptions in Ukraine and Russia. Indeed. Thank you for those good strategies. I also want to mention about promoting use of local suppliers. Like we all know, Uganda has been Uganda has been trying hard to promote its uh, local suppliers. They even came up with a scheme called Build Uganda by Uganda. The Bubu, I hope we all know about it. I can give you an example of Bubu. For example, Quality Chemicals who produce the ARVs. So government is giving them funding and the necessary support so that just in case of such a crisis, we can still get the medicines down here. Uh, and many more, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in the Bubu, like we all know. Let me invite for the interest of time, uh, Cassis, come and kindly conclude that discussion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for this uh, interesting presentation. Uh, in conclusion, we can all believe that um, uh, Russia even crisis caused use to disrupt supply chains in Uganda and the whole world. And in this briefing paper, we have a uh, uh, to talk about the challenges and indeed give strategies to make sure these challenges are solved to ensure business continuity in Uganda. Uh, in this same briefing paper, we have attached our references that you can uh, check in and understand where we come from. We'd like to thank each and everyone on this team who has contributed positively to this briefing paper. Thank you so much. <laughs>